So I've gotten a lot of requests on how I make my bone broth and so I thought it would be really easy if I just made a video. Um, it's really simple and you can make a couple of jars of bone broth with just such little ingredients. So first what you want to start out with is a pastured chicken carcass. So just the bones of a pastured chicken, if you're in a pinch you can use organic chicken. Um, and so when we cook a whole chicken, after I remove the meat, I will save everything from the skin, um, the bones, the cartilage, and sometimes feet if we have it, and put it in a bag and throw it in the freezer and then make bone broth whenever I'm ready to do it. So this has been thawing out just for a few hours in the fridge. And then next, um, you just take in a whole onion and throw that in. Um, a whole carrot. If it's a really long carrot, I usually just break it in half. Usually I put in some celery, but I don't have any today. So it's really simple. There's no real rules to it. Just don't forget the apple cider vinegar, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, a whole bulb of garlic. And I like to use organic ingredients because you're throwing in the skins. And the skins are really important because that's what helps get the color. And um, next, I have peppercorns, whole peppercorns, and just throw them in. We'll be straining it after it's finished. Um, and then when you have herbs in the summertime or whenever your garden gives out herbs, you can just freeze them in a little Ziploc bag or you can dry them. I happen to just put them in a Ziploc bag and throw them in the freezer so that way I can make bone broth when I was ready. Um, next, you're just gonna put some sea salt in as much as you like. If you want it to be really salty, you can add a lot. If not, just add as much as you like. Um, and then most importantly, you wanna add the apple cider vinegar. We like the apple cider vinegar that says with the mother, that one is like a true apple cider vinegar. And then, um, it's just basically about a tablespoon to two tablespoons. I never measure any of my ingredients anymore. Um, so you just want to eyeball it in. You can't go wrong. And if you had celery, you can throw in celery, pretty much whatever you want your bone broth to taste like. Um, and then next, you're just going to fill up the pot with water. Um, so we filled it up to the max line and then um, we're going to grab the lid. And fill it on, shut it tight, and then now you're going to press manual, and then pretty much 130 minutes later, it's going to warm up, and then it'll say on, and then 130 minutes later, you'll have bone broth, and then um, I can show you what to do after that. So I'm using uh, an instant pot, which is a pressure cooker, and I absolutely love this thing because it can make bone broth in about two hours, uh, a little over two hours. And if you're using, if you don't have a pressure cooker, uh, you can use a stainless steel pot and cook it on the oven, I'm sorry, on the stove top, and um, it will have to simmer for 24 hours. Um, or you can use a slow cooker, which is like a crock pot, and you can, simmer that for 24 hours and that way you can you don't have to babysit a stove top um, okay so our bone broth is done it's been about 130 minutes and the tools that I've pulled out are some clean mason jars I like the wide mouth mason jars because these are the freezable kind and I just throw them all in the freezer and then pull them out as I need them during the they last us about two weeks um, a strainer, a ladle, this funnel thing that goes over the jars, um, and some canning lids. So next, well, I like to have a couple of dish towels out because it kind of gets a little bit messy when you're 
ladling these into jars. And plus I kind of like something padded because these jars are gonna be really, really hot. I usually wait until it can cool down a little bit um, before I do it. So it's been cooling for just a little while. So next you're gonna wanna put the funnel on top of the mason jar. And this made a whole bunch. I filled it up to the max line. Um, you can make a lower amount and your, your um, bone broth will gel, which is a good sign um, that it has a lot of healthy minerals in it. Um, I put a lot of water in it, so, um, so it, mine probably won't gel. So this strainer has a handle, so I'm just going to rest it on the top here. And then you just ladle it out carefully and try not to make a big mess. And the strainer is going to catch um, some skin and some of the floating um, onion skins and garlic skins, so that looks about right. And then you want to leave a little bit of headspace for it to freeze. And then I usually just put it on top of another dish cloth. So that way it's all not something hot. But so you can see the nice golden color. Um, you can make it as dark as you need it, like by adding more onion skins. And if I had maybe another carrot or some celery, that would have darkened up the color really nicely. So the color pretty much changes every single time I make it, depending on which ingredients I have on hand. So you can see already my strainer has got some of the herbs that I put in and some of the skin. Chicken skin, cartilage, garlic, anything that's kind of floated to the top, the peppercorns. So we're just going to continue ladling it in. I usually like to have at least like five or six uh, jars in my freezer to use during the week. Keep an eye on that. <laughs> Don't let it overflow. And then I like to have a big one that's not freezer safe. And um, I can just put this one into my refrigerator and use that immediately. And this is really good to have immediately as long as it's cooled down enough to drink it and it's just really beneficial for you so I'm just gonna keep on ladling until we reach the bottom and then you can just throw the rest out and this is a good way to use all parts of the animal um, And here we are. You're just going to keep on doing it until you've filled all your jars. I like these reuse these plastic lids because they're one piece. You don't have to fuss with two pieces, but the two piece ones work just fine as well too. So like I said, the wide mouth ones, or you want to make sure they are freezable safe jars because you don't want anything cracking in your freezer. Um, so that's it, that's bone broth. It's pretty easy. The hardest part I think is ladling them into, ladling hot broth into jars and trying to find the space to do it all. Um, sometimes I just wait till my family goes to sleep at night and then I can do this project. Another thing I like about the Instant Pot is it has a warm setting so I can get to it when I need to because sometimes things happen within the next like two and a half hours while it's cooking. So, um, so that's it. That's our bone broth. If you like our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.